Church. We'll be right back. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives Gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding and making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the Info War to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. Now take you live to the Central Texas Command Center and the heart of the resistance. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight and I have Paul Joseph Watson from London on the phone. One of our staff writers here and Paul wrote several key stories in the last couple of days about what's going on in the press. Now, We've had the story that he wrote uh, yesterday, Harry Reid calling Clive and Bundy supporters domestic terrorists. And then the story that broke this morning that he wrote, White House counterterrorism chief says that confrontational children could be terrorists. So parents, watch out for them. This is, as Alex just said in his report, this is social engineering for the police state. Paul, welcome. Hi, David. This is pretty amazing. They're really stepping this rhetoric up. And, you know, these were peaceful people protesting the police state. And they're the ones now, the media is being, is spinning this as well as the government trying to talk about how these people were threatening the government. The government had been threatening and attacking people all week. It was the government that was threatening us the entire time we were standing there. And as people were gradually milling forward, they were threatening to shoot. They actually, a Fox News reporter tried to get closer because he was having trouble hearing. He wanted to interview somebody up there. He was walking forward saying, Fox News, Fox News, lifting up his shirt, stopping, and they waved him off. They wouldn't let him come by. They were the ones who were threatening people. They were threatening reporters as well as anyone who was in the area. 
Well, first off, David, I'd like to commend you on the excellent coverage. I was watching the stream last weekend at the Bundy Ranch, and obviously we received a ton of positive messages, so kudos to you on that coverage. And Josh was there with me, too. He was filming as well. So, uh, And Josh is going to be going to Boston to with Jakari Jackson to see what police state measures they're doing there, because that is, I think, one of the most important elements. There's so many elements about this. There's Agenda 21, there's the political corruption and everything, but this police state issue is now the one that is bubbling up to the top, isn't it, Paul? Exactly, and the article today, which ties into all this, is um, White House Counter Terror Chief says confrontational children could be terrorists, and this is Lisa Monaco, who is Obama's chief homeland security and counter-terror advisor. She came out in a speech on Tuesday night and followed it up in subsequent press appearances and said, quote, what kinds of behaviors are we talking about? For the most part, they're not related directly to plotting attacks. They're more subtle. For instance, parents might see sudden personality changes in their children at home becoming confrontational. <laughs> so she's actually talking about the radicalization of children into becoming terrorists and the behavior that denotes that possibility is children becoming confrontational with their own parents. What child, what teenager isn't at some point confrontational with their parents? That's so right. as I extrapolated out in this article, again, it, the, the term terrorism, the term domestic terrorism, as used by Harry Reid yesterday, it's clearly lost all meaning because it's been so overused as this tool to demonize political activism that it's become completely meaningless altogether. And you can see that they're now engaging in this program, which Alex has talked about on the video you just played. It's a mass reclassification of deviant behavior. It's about behavioral control because they're trying to define any political activism or any mere belief that's adversarial to the state they're characterizing it as radical and dangerous. So it's the fear-driven implementation of thought crime. Yes. You know, they're not, they're not doing it because necessarily they plan to go out and round up and arrest millions of libertarians or constitutionalists. They're doing it to dissuade people on the outside from becoming interested in these kind of ideas in the first place. So it's For self -censorship. preemptive. Yeah, self-censorship as well as perhaps uh, some drugs, you know. They've already got a condition that they created just a couple of years ago called uh, ODD. You know, I, I'm sure they they started with that acronym. They say if you have oppositional defiant disorder, right? And that's what they're, it looks like they're talking about. They're trying to set this up. Are they going to do something maybe like they did with ADD and, and uh, drugging all the boys in school with Ritalin because it's almost entirely boys that they give Ritalin to? Exactly. <laughs> The legacy for that, of course, is the former Soviet Union, yes. where they had these psychushkas, these mental hospitals, which were used by the state as prisons in order to intern political dissidents. And in fact, a Soviet psychiatry expert, the Institute at the time, said that it was about ideas about a struggle for truth and justice are formed by personalities with a paranoid structure. So they were classifying adversarial ideas against the state as a form of psychosis. And then in 2009, Psychology Today came out with an article which viciously attacked us, which basically said the same thing, that this oppositional defiant disorder was manifesting itself in the political arena. People who were <laughs> suspicious of the state could have a form of psychosis. And then, of course, at the same time, you had leaked Homeland Security reports saying, people reverent of individual liberty. They weren't even talking about being a part of a political party or supporting a candidate. Merely being reverent of individual liberty was a characterization, a sign of potential terrorism. So it shifted from the psychiatric arena, uh, declaring people who have anti-statist ideas as being potentially mentally ill. And now they've shifted it into the political battlefield saying, you know, we're all right-wing extremist radicals who so want much, violence. So much for the idea of the loyal opposition, right? Uh, just give those people the blue pill and tell them to shut up or we'll commit them to an institution. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely chilling and it, it, its legacy is in the, the most draconian totalitarian states throughout history. Yes. But now, of course, as you said, the whole push is about Bundy supporters being violent. And yet the only violence during that whole standoff over the course of the past couple of weeks was carried out by the BLM feds when they tasered Bundy family members, mm -hmm. when they assaulted 
pregnant women and cancer victims during that early standoff before the main one. And as he said, the people escalating the violent rhetoric, as Harry Reid did yesterday, were again the BLM agents. I mean, you were there on the front lines. You heard them saying, yes, threatening yes. that they would shoot people. Yes. So they're the ones engaging in violence. They're the ones engaging in violent rhetoric. And yet the mass media lays all that on Bundy supporters when they were the key, they played the key role in keeping that standoff peaceful. The mass of people there were, I don't know how long it was. Uh, I guess we were there for maybe about an hour. We had to wait for the uh, mounted people to get there, whatever. But they were threatening us the entire time. I never heard anybody threatening to shoot them, but they were on a loudspeaker threatening to shoot us. Now, one of the things, Paul, that bothers me about this was early in the week, it was actually Glenn Beck who got out in front and led the charge. He had an interview with Clive and Bundy. And in that interview, he started talking about the legal issues. And Glenn Beck spun this to say, oh, so you're saying that you're sovereign over all this. And then he had a guy that was there in the studio with him and said, uh, Mr. Bundy, are you part of the sovereign citizen movement? Now, you and I know what that is. Mr. Bundy had never heard that term before. I know that the FBI has listed as one of their top groups, people that, ident that they identify, that they label as sovereign, sovereign citizens. They label them as domestic terrorists. And they have pushed this narrative, they've pushed this label out to law enforcement so that if they label somebody as a sovereign citizen, law enforcement officers now believe that their lives are in immediate danger from someone that has that label. That was one of the most irresponsible things I've ever seen anywhere. And they got out in front of everybody else and called him something he had no idea of. And he was never saying that he was sovereign. He was saying that the that the county, that the state was sovereign. And as a matter of fact, we have a Representative Stockman from Texas said that today, pointed out that the federal law says that if they're going to use force to enforce some kind of a federal judgment or anything else, they need to contract with local law enforcement. That's the federal law. They were the ones who were breaking the law. They were the ones who sent in an army of people from all over the country. They were the ones who were pointing snipers at everybody. That's what Harry Reid said. He said there were hundreds and hundreds of people from around the country that came there. Yeah, federal agents. They also had sniper rifles federal agents. They had weapons, automatic weapons, federal agents. They had children lined up. That wasn't the federal agents. That wasn't us either. That was somebody who was not even there talking about what he thought was going to be done or what he thought would be a good idea. Nobody talked about that. And as we showed, that did not happen. And then you've got the, the so-called lawlessness of Bundy. Well, the actual court order uh, that the feds got against him did not give them any right to seize his property did not give them any right to shoot dead his cattle which evidence has now emerged didn't yes. give give them any right to destroy his property which evidence of which has also now emerged so they broke the law and even if you agree even if you stand on the side of the feds as glenn beck does as judge andrew napolitano pointed out all they've got the power to do is put a lien on his property and try and claim back the so-called grazing fees that way. They have no legal right to go and steal his property, to shoot his cattle, and to intimidate peaceful protesters. But now they've opened it up and labeled all the Bundy supporters as terrorists, as Harry Reid did last night. That opens it up to, you know, NDAA, indefinite detention without trial. It opens it up to drone strikes. It opens it up to summary execution now that they've declared the United States as a battlefield in the war on terror under the NDAA. Now they've been designated as terrorists, they can use terrorist tactics against them, which is interesting because there are allegations floating around which are not substantiated but are pretty interesting. I was looking into them before the show that some of the main players involved in directing the BLM siege against Bundy, uh, the people on the front lines, were in fact around 10 to 12 years ago special forces green beret soldiers who were involved in occupying cities in pakistan and afghanistan fighting taliban and al-qaeda terrorists yeah and this yeah. was in a discovery channel documentary it appears as if one of the individuals now in charge at the blm uh, played that role as a special forces green beret 12 years ago he fought terrorists and now he's on the front line of this siege against Americans who are now being designated by terrorists, not only by Harry Reid, remember, in that video that came out last night, he said, I've spoken to Eric Holder, I've spoken to the Justice Department, they agree. So it's not just Harry Reid, it's Washington, D.C. that now sees 
Bundy supporters as terrorists 